In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Motorsports Fan Zone. Now at two great locations, Crown Promenade and now at Federation Square, the 6th to the 17th of March. Everybody and welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane coming to you from Grand Prix City, Melbourne across Channel 31, Melbourne and Geelong and also coming to you on Channel 44 in Adelaide. Thank you to everybody in Adelaide who watched the program last week and for all the good uh, good thoughts and, uh, and well wishes. Thank you very much. We're glad to be back. Now, of course, coming up, uh, a bit of a sore point here for some people in Adelaide, but it is Grand Prix City, Melbourne and, of course, part of the lead up to the Australian Grand Prix over the past few years has been the traditional Phillip Island Historic Meeting. One month that you will see well and truly represented there this weekend will be Elfin. Speaking of South Australia, created and built in South Australia, the Elfin Mark was without a doubt one of the most successful race car manufacturers in Australia. Our guest tonight, David Dowsey, has done this incredible, built this incredible, well built it, it's almost like building it, it's too heavy to lift up, it's incredible tome here, which is Elfin, the spirit of, uh, of speed, and you can see it's got the, um, that's a, a genuine uh, sort of identification plate on the side and there you go Elf and the Spirit of Speed by David Dassey and he'll be joining us a little bit later on in the program. But right now um, Doc is with us again and uh, Doc we are, uh, we've had a few technical problems but we're back together and we'll catch up with you in a moment but right now we've just got to uh, go very very quickly to the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. <laughs> Englishman Alex Lowe's has made a dream debut for Kawasaki with a hard-fought win over teammate Jonathan Ray to lead the Superbike World Championship after the opening round last week at Phillip Island. Lowe's passed Ray with two laps to go to win Sunday's 22-lap race by just over three hundredths of a second from Ray. It was Lowe's first win for Kawasaki and his first since 2018. Lowe's left Phillip Island with a haul of 51 points, leading from Ducati Scott Redding, race one winner Yamaha's Topak Raglioglu and Ray. As we record this program, the Australian Formula One Grand Prix is still scheduled to go ahead as planned, despite the effects of the worldwide coronavirus outbreak. Already the opening rounds of the MotoGP season in Qatar and Thailand have been affected, with the Premier class not running due to travel bans on people from Italy. Also, the prestigious Geneva Auto Show has been cancelled. Ferrari have warned they will not leave for Australia without guarantees that their staff will not be held in quarantine or restricted from entry into Australia. Also affected would be the Huss team, Alfa Romeo and Formula One tyre supplier Pirelli. In a statement released on Monday, Australian Grand Prix CEO Andrew Westercock said that Formula One had confirmed that the Australian Grand Prix is going ahead and we're looking forward to welcoming them and the teams to Melbourne in the next one to two weeks. As they prepared for the final word on the race, Formula One teams have wrapped up their pre-season testing in Barcelona. Once again, it was Mercedes that ended the test with the fastest lap with Valtieri Bottas on top from the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. There were encouraging signs for Daniel Ricciardo. His Renault finished the final day of testing third fastest, ahead of both the Ferraris and defending world champion Lewis Hamilton. The bizarre story of Team Sydney continues after the departure of lead driver James Courtney and his Boost Mobile sponsorship. Speaking for the first time since the departure, Courtney told Channel 10's RPM program that leaving the team was a tough decision to make. Yeah, it was a big commitment that was made um, in the start, which, which was a big part of my deal. Um, and I probably let it go along, you know, unresolved too long uh, because of a friendship with John. And after Adelaide, it became pretty evident that it wasn't going to be um, honoured. So, um, yeah, so enough was enough and I had to, um, had to do what we did. Team Sydney team boss Jonathan Webb finally made a statement of sorts telling Mark Fogarty of Australian Auto Action that everything's moving ahead. I'll comment more once things are settled. One thing that does appear settled is second driver Chris Pither and the Coca-Cola sponsorship. Pither confirming on Monday that he intends to stay with the team for season 2020 and the Coca-Cola sponsorship is staying with him. 
Things are looking far more settled in the TCR series for 2020. Team tested a Winton last week with a good turnout of cars and drivers. Tony Alberto in his Honda was fastest ahead of the Hyundai of Nathan Morecambe. Yeah, we had a good day actually. We got through quite a few things that we wanted to try and the car was much better than when we raced here uh, last year. So I think we've made a bit of an improvement with the setup and our philosophy uh, with the setup. So nice to be quickest today, but it means yeah, it doesn't mean a lot. So we're not uh, we're obviously happy about it, but we know there's a huge amount of work to do uh, to stay there. Seawood with the, the Alphas and also GRM with their free makes. So I reckon all of them are going to be strong and today is a test and put everybody out there to show but people could be foxing, people might not so who knows but looking forward to the Grand Prix in two weeks time. Former supercars driver Jason Barguana had his first real experience with his new Peugeot and he was pretty happy about how things went. Um, today to actually get uh, some, some uh, and feel the tyre, get some good clean laps. Starting to really explore where the grip is and it sort of brought back a few memories from the old mini days when I raced them around. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with it. You know, we really tuned the car up uh, quite well on the old tyre and we put a better tyre on and it did a good time. So, yeah, it's very close. It's, uh, it's good. Yeah, done a lot of laps around here. I mean, uh, to think we're probably in as fast today as what I was back in my V8 supercar days. That's how far they've come and the track's changed and uh, these little, uh, the little Peugeot was a bit of a rocket today. It's good. Series champion Will Brown in the second Hyundai was third in the test ahead of the alpha of Jordan Cox. Meanwhile, over at the Bend in South Australia, the official pre-season test for the new S5000s was held. Eleven drivers took part in the test, including category debutants Lewis Leeds, Antonio Astuti and Thomas Maxwell. Australian Indy 500 driver James Davison also tested the car in preparation for his debut on the streets of Albert Park, and he was pretty impressed by what he found. Honestly, the moment I did the outlap, it reminded me of the Indy Lights car that I drove, which was a big, talky V8 car, uh, the previous generation to what there is today. Um, definitely more power, but I would say less tyre grip. And uh, a lot of fun to drive, really. I, I think to achieve the right balance with what they've wanted to create here for the drivers and the fans. And yeah, I'm loving it. You know, we've been running on very old tyres, so curious to see what they're like on, on some better ones that aren't 400k old on the canvas, but so far I'm loving it. Another debutant is New Zealand Formula Ford champion Jordan Michaels, and Jordan will be joining us live in the In Pit Lane studio next week. And a big win to Alex Bowman in the latest round of the NASCAR Cup at Fontana Speedway. Bowman led five times for 110 laps to take out his second NASCAR Cup Series win. Kyle Busch was second, almost nine seconds adrift of Bowman. Kurt Busch finished third in an otherwise uneventful race. Yes, that's uh, all the news for this week, but we'll have more news, of course, next week. Now, coming up after the break, we're going to be joined by our special guest, David Dowsey, to talk all about this incredible book, Elfin, The Spirit of Speed. You're watching In Pit Lane. Don't go away. We'll be right back. OK, we are now on a break, ladies and gentlemen. And if you are watching on, uh, this is this is a bit where we're... Actually, what we're, we're doing something a bit different now. We're going to take the breaks, because we're not on Facebook anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to take the breaks and we're going to upload the breaks to Facebook. We're not sure why. We're just, we're just something we thought we'd try. Just something a little bit different. So, David, if you'd like to uh, come on come on through and we can, uh, we can set you up and all the rest. And while you're doing that, I will say a very big thank you to our program sponsors, the Motorsport Fan Zone, and now there are two locations. And Doc, uh, you and I went out last last year to the Motorsport Fan Zone. We did, and we it, had a we had a good time. It was lots of fun, and uh, there was a, not just the Fan Zone. There was a lot of other displays that jumped on board with the Fan Zone, and uh, it, like a, there was adventure caravans, and Renault was there as well, though too. It was a fantastic event. So yeah, just uh, don't just buy your merchandise and memorabilia there. Have a look around. It's great on the promenade, and a beautiful. What well, it doesn't get better than the Yarra, does it? The, the old muddy old Yarra. Well, it was, it was certainly an interesting place, and obviously it was a success because they have moved it as well now. Two locations up at uh, Fed Square as well. We'll mm. be doing some stuff. We'll be doing some filming there over the next uh, couple of weeks, including some live streaming. And uh, so make sure that you subscribe to the Inpit Lane YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook. That way we can, you'll know what happens. I'm, I'm, we're having a meeting tomorrow to decide where and when all that is happening, but we'll let you know via those online platforms uh, when that happens. 
but yeah, as Doc was saying, I mean, it's basically it's a great place to go if if you want to sort of you know get all your merchandise and before you head down to the Grand Prix and don't have to join in that throng at the Albert Park. It's a great place to go along and get there. And also, I think I said last week, I'm not sure if I did or not, but what they have is like last year they certainly had older stuff. You know, things like. Caterham and oh the memorabilia exactly oh, yeah like I uh, like stuff from teams that just don't exist anymore well Mark Webber's going back as far as Minardi, yes, the Minardi, yeah, Minardi days Minardi as well though looking, too yeah. yeah you can reminisce and uh, yeah so you a little bit of retro stuff you can proudly go around the track afterwards and uh, after having a bite to eat along Crown Promenade of course lots of fun beautiful Yarra I actually come in on the train tonight I, I hate it at the moment. Flinders Street, I reckon, have got a philosophy at the moment. If they pull you in next to, uh, on uh, uh, stage uh, pit number number 12 along there, you're right up against the Yarra and you get all the cafes and all the Yarra along the there. It's, it's very enticing. Yeah. Do I stop and have a quick coffee or do I come to Infit Lane? The, no, I'm, I'm always down. No, you, 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 come, you, come, you come here and as, as indeed you have. But yeah, <laughs> that's the Motorsport Fan Zone. It starts at the end of this week. Um, you'll see uh, various ads. If you're watching Channel 31 Melbourne, you'll be seeing various ads over the next... Uh, a couple of weeks to let you know what's happening and as I said we'll have more news for you on that uh, next week weekend. Bed, Bed Square's exciting because it'll tie in with Moomba as well too. Yes, it ties in with Moomba. It'll, there'll be lots of stuff happening there. There's also, they're also on the big screen there, they're going to be showing um, Drive to Survive, the, uh, the Netflix uh, thing. So if you haven't seen that, if you don't have Netflix, you can go down and watch it live and as I said, you might see how ugly mush is up there on that big screen as well. Um, so. As I said, meeting tomorrow. Yeah, read the read the updates and news at eleven. Press releases. Yes. Anyway, um, so I think that's um, I, I think that's all we've got for the break. Uh, coming up a little, little bit later for, in our next break, Stephen Heath is going to join us for a bonus song. He'll um, we'll be giving you all of his details when he comes up, and he's also going to play us out tonight with some more music. Playing emotions bleed. That's coming up in the next break. But right now, for those of you who are watching on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel, we're going to go back to our uh, regular program on Channel Thirty One and introduce our guest tonight, David Dowsey. So, um, Pete, when you're when you're ready. Standing by. <coughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, coming in on camera three, four. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as we said, coming up this weekend down at Phillip Island is the Phillip Island Historic. And if you go to any historic meeting in Australia, one of the names that you will hear, of course, is Elfin. Australia, of course, had a huge uh, a local motoring industry with Ford, Holden and all the rest of it's gone. But we also had a very healthy local racing car industry. And undoubtedly, one of the most successful was Elfin, based in South Australia, Gary Cooper, going back to the 1950s and all the way through until the, the beginning of the ground effect era. So um, our guest tonight, David Dowsey, has created this incredible book. He has written this. This thing weighs a ton. I really, I, I literally have trouble picking this up. It's called Elfin Spirit of Speed, and to tell us all about it is David Dowsey. David, welcome to Inpit Lane. It's good to be here, fellas. Now tell us all about this remarkable. As I said, this thing, this is not a regular. This, we're not going to find this in the remainder bin at whatever at the local supermarket. This is a very much a high end limited edition book. Tell us how this all came to be. Uh, well, the chap that published the book is Bill Hemming, and Bill owned Elfin Sports Cars uh, for a short period of time, and working with Holden, constructed the MS8 um, Clubman and, and um, Streamliner. Uh, Bill approached me about five years ago um, uh, and asked me if I would um, write a book about Elfin. And at that stage, the scope of the book was probably about half what it became. We were talking about a 350-page book, about 40 or 50,000 words, but it ended up being 704 pages, 100,000 words, and it took me uh, four to five years. Yeah, it, it, as I said, it is, it is genuinely very, very heavy. That, that, what is interesting is it has the, the identification plate on mm. the front of it, and that's sort of you know, what you would get when you, when you got your card. But tell us a little bit about Elfin. Um, you know, tell us about the history, Gary Cooper from South Australia. Mm. How did it all start? Well, Gary's father, Clifford, uh, owned a body-making business in, in, um, in Adelaide. And Gary, f from the sidelines, learned about bodybuilding and, and, and crafting aluminium, etc., etc. Uh, and he was uh, a racer. And as a, as a teenager, he got involved with local friends and they, 
they tinkered and, and built little Austin specials and things like that. And Gary started racing um, before he was allowed to drive on public roads. So where does the name Elfin come from? Well, uh, uh, there's a story related in the book where Gary is standing in a garage surrounded by some of his friends and they're shooting words around. And after a while, Elfin came up and, um, and Gary just said, yeah, let, let's just do that. He was that sort of guy that, you know, he, he, he wasn't too fussy about things like that. And he heard it and he just said, yeah, let's do that. The thing about this, apart from all of the words that are in here, which are very important, there is also some stunning photos, beautiful photos in here. Um, some of them, like, there's, there's classic photos, of course. There's also stuff that you've actually done specifically for the book. Tell That's us, right. uh, who did those and, and where do they come from? They're fantastic photos. So we commissioned a, a photographer in Sydney by the name of Richard Weinstein, and I'd worked with him on a couple of other projects that I'd done previously. And we pho photographed um, quite a few of the cars in, in, a, in the studio, some of them on the track, like for instance, um, down at Phillip Island. The idea being that every chapter is on a single model and it's full of historic material and photographs. And Which would be why it's so, yeah. it's so thick and so big. That's right. And at the end of the chapter, there's a, like a photo essay, an eight page essay of glorious colour images of that one particular car and every every Alphen model is featured in the car in the book. David great to have you aboard thanks for Thank coming into the studio more than 50 interviews you did That's I'd just great. like to do two two of the quotes just briefly just a small snippet from two of the paragraphs John Bow said it's about all the things that make life worth living and all the hellish things too and Vern Chupin which I'd like to expand on if you could a little bit more because he um, I think he does the foreword or something like that it's not a fan piece this book is the tr true story behind an incredible endeavour. This is the story of Elfin. Um, you must have had some wonderful for those those 50 plus interviews. It must have been incredible. It, it absolutely made the book. So I, I'm a, a bit young to have sort of lived through some of this. And you don't say that. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> my approach was to talk to the people that were there, the designers, the people that worked in the factory, the drivers, the pit crew. The, the relatives, the family, and they're all featured in there, and it's their story and not mine. So of all the, uh, we saw sort of some more photos there, of course, you know, I was, my first sort of memory of Elfin was, of course, the Formula 5000 days and some of those classic sports cars up through to the MS7 and those sorts of cars. But of course, b before that, we had things like the Elfin 400, mm -hmm. um, big bag of sports cars back in the day. Um, there's also a connection, because I know you've got an interest in this, there was also some connection, was there not, between Elfin and the land speed record attempt by Sir Donald Campbell, is that correct? Mm -hmm. There was. Uh, so the, the, the story of the land speed record is a story in itself that went for months and months out in the desert in South Australia. But one of the things that they did, um, the, the, um, Donald Campbell's car had Dunlop, special Dunlop tyres and they made smaller versions of them and put them on an Elfin Catalina and used that to test the surface of the salt so every day it would go out up and back and they would, they would have instruments testing um, things that I don't really understand about the salt surface. The elephant so was a guinea pig. It, the, <laughs> the elephant was a guinea pig. It was. That is fantastic. We'll, we'll, we'll catch up with more in just a moment and we'll talk a bit about what people can see at Phillip Island this week in terms of, you know, elephants and our favourite elephants and our favourite elephant me me memories. But just quickly, if people want this book, and as I said, this is not sort of, you know, this is not a throwaway. This is a, a very substantial work of art um, and it's something that's, it's very much a collector's item. So if people want to get uh, get their hands on the limited edition, how do they do that? It's available through the Elfin Heritage Centre uh, and the website elfinspiritofspeed.com. So they can order online, pay, and it's it's delivered straight to the door. It's not available in bookshops. When did you release it, David? And is there still a few there to grab? There's, there's still some left. Uh, it's been on the market only for about two to three weeks. Right. Yeah. Excellent. I've got a library card. Can I uh, check it in and, with you and just take it home for tonight for, for a week or two? Let's see how you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing to pay the late fee. <laughs> I don't have a library card. I've got a credit card. There's not enough on it to buy the book, I can tell you. But then with my credit card, that's not, not saying much. We're going to take another break on In Pit Lane. We're going to be joined a little bit later by Stephen Heath with more music. But right now, we're going to take you to a break. This is In Pit Lane on Channel 31 Melbourne and Geelong. And of course, Channel 44 in Adelaide. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Okay, oh, we've got. 
We've got oh, Sarah's coming in oh, now. Oh, we'll take, Sarah's so coming you in. You buggered we'll it up this time. Yeah, no, yes, I haven't buggered anything up. Stephen, if you could jump into uh, into position. <laughs> We're just getting over there. Sarah, so Sarah's on one side working on Doc's mic. And then, so D David, if I just from there, apart from you know, I know you basically from your. You can do whatever hmm? you need to do. 45 seconds up on Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, I know from uh, you, you, you've written books uh, about um, sure. uh, Aston Martin as well. That's one of your. Yes, I have. Is yeah. that's, that's one of your great passions. It is. Uh, that was the first book I wrote back in about 2007. It's still in print. Uh, it's, it's been published five times, uh, and it's been quite successful. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose when you look at it, you know, we talk about books being dead and all that. I mean, this is this is very much going back to the original, you know, idea of books. Books were once things. I mean, I've got books at home that are like a hundred. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm audio. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah is going. Your mic. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Sarah is now at attacking. Though you notice Sarah is attacking. <laughs> oh, she hasn't attacked me. She, she, uh, uh, Come in here. She just hasn't. She won't go. Won't go near me. In fact, she's got an apprehended, an apprehended violence order against there. <laughs> she, she's, she, I'm actually dangerously close to her right now. If my parole officer is watching, I mean, I could well be in serious trouble. I'm almost in touching distance, but I, 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 hands above the desk. My tiger stripes are fine. They're actually underneath the shirt now. So yeah, she's yeah, she's left her claws in, in tonight, fortunately. So there we go. So David is just being remiked. This is a technical term we use uh, exactly, in the world yeah. of television. Exactly. I did I did four years of university to learn that. Re, re to re, I was going take three, but she seems to reckon she's settled it as well now. Too. Do you reckon while David's not looking, we could just slip this under the table and just put some sort of um, uh, book we find out the back? From if, the, you from the, if you can lift from, from, it, it from is, the green room. It, it is seriously, <laughs> uh, it is seriously very, very heavy. If you're listening, if you're listening, Heidi, can we have camera uh, camera five so where no one's looking, <laughs> please, so I can just slip it under the desk and <laughs> exactly. But yeah, while okay. we, while you are doing it, while we are doing props and we are getting uh, David still getting mic'd up, just yeah, have a look at the uh, identification plate on the side of it that is Actually, in fact it's not yeah. that is that is in fact that is metal if anyone wants wants to give me a gig before we go to Stephen yes there we go thanks there we go. Darren Darren's all over it there you go that is that is a metal plate and that is affixed to the yeah if you've got the, if you look on the monocoque of an MR5 or anything like that that's what you'll see at the front there that's the uh, there's even got the BP I think it was a long time sponsor of uh, I mean, the golden era of you know, Ancestry Melfin. That's, on the, mm -hmm. and, that's uh, on the dust cover. So, are you talking to us now, Dave? I am. You are, that's all right. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're allowed yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so anyway, uh, we'll set up our, our musical guest tonight is Stephen Heath. Uh, Stephen came in. We thank Stephen for coming in. Unfortunately, uh, we had advertised an, another band coming in, but unfortunately this morning they had some bad news on the rabbit front. <laughs> Um, and I'm hoping that I'm hoping Bunny is all right because I'm very fond of rabbits, and I don't would hope that Bunny is 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 okay. So please let us know because yes, we would we would like to know because bunnies are lovely and we we don't want them hurt. So and, um, anyway, Stephen has come in there. If you would like to see him uh, playing around Melbourne, he's going to be at the Pause Bar at Balaclava on Saturday the 28th of March. He's also on Facebook uh, at Heath, uh, Heath Stevens Music on Facebook. But right now he's going to, uh, he's going to play a bonus... Um, there, there, there's details of Alpha Spirit of Spree, but right now... There we are, we've, we've, got, we've got to it. As I said, we've been having all sorts of problems with graphics all night. As a bonus song for all of you watching on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel right now, this is Stephen Heath and Emotions Bleed. Try to win you Try to convince Can't you feel my love? It's calling you. My love's calling you. And I'm falling for you. And it's driving me crazy because you don't feel like I do. It's heartbreaking And I kissed you And I listened to you You're so beautiful 
Stephen Heath and Emotions Bleed. And Stephen will be joining us a little bit later to play us out on the program. Stephen, if you'd like to just stay there for the moment because we're a very short break and we'll be back with you in just a moment to play us out with his song, Dramatic Nights. Now, we're going to uh, return to Channel 31. Remember now, if you, but also, if you are watching us via the Impit Lane YouTube channel, remember to like and subscribe. Also, the notification, the little bell, little notification bell, if you click on that, Every time we have new programs or new content going up, um, stuff from car shows or from the from the track, then you will be notified about that. You'll get a little message on your phone or your, your computer saying that In Pit Lane have just put something new up and you can follow it. Also, remember to um, like and subscribe. That's, uh, that's very important as well. The In Pit Lane, the, the YouTube uh, algorithms are... Um, a black art and a mystery, but if you like and subscribe and comment and have lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of interchange of ideas and lots and lots of uh, you know interaction, then YouTube likes that very much, and we like to please YouTube because they have lots of money and they're very rich and powerful, and if we don't please them, bad things may happen to us. So anyway, let's go back to Channel Thirty One and. Ch and, ch and Channel 44 are much, much nicer to deal with than in the main than YouTube. Um, they're very they're decent people. They, they use both their left and right indicators. They're very decent, <laughs> very, very decent, hard-working people. And we're going to go back to them right now. So um, when they're ready, Pete, if you would uh, please uh, do the honours once again. Their headlights work too? And headlights, well, they've got blinker fluid in and everything. Oh, yeah, I saw a good post about the other day. It's hard to get that stuff. It's very hard to get that stuff. <laughs> I think people are using it as an alternative hand sanitizer. Uh, that, well, it's probably. <laughs> Ten, eight, I'll leave it right seven, there. Six, <laughs> five, four, three. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, our guest tonight is David Dowsey, author of the book. Elfin, the Spirit of Speed, an amazing book, and we're talking about you know, coming up this weekend at Phillip Island. We'll obviously see lots and lots of elfins mm -hmm. there. I mean, do you have a favourite elf? After going through all of these you know, model elfins and looking at them, what's your favourite? Do you? Mm, I do have some favourites. A lot of the earlier ones I I've, I've found, found very pretty, like the uh, the Streamliner, the Melilla, um, and the 400, uh, the V8 400. 
Um, but of course, you know, the F5000s are pretty special as well. And they'll, there'll be some of those at uh, Phillip Island. They're still weekend. ticking over, aren't they, they David? Are, a, lot, yeah. a lot of the Alpins as well, though, too. They haven't been uh, put away in mothballs. Uh, they, we, uh, when Brett and I go out to the events and, and uh, circuits, uh, we get to see every now and again. And Brett's eyes light up like a, like a Christmas tree yes. and stuff like that. Um, 29 major titles as well, though, too. Is there any significant ones that you think that stand out as well, though, too, where you, I mean, you've done years of these now? Um, well, there's New Zealand Grands Prix wins, Malaysian, um, Singapore uh, Grands Prix wins, um, Australian Drivers' Championships, there's lots and lots of success. they're just the major ones as well yeah, too. Yeah, lots of success with both the cars and the, and the drivers in those cars. What it's interesting, they were, just such a, they were just such a successful car, particularly in the Formula 5000 days, and mm. it was the same a bit with the Matic as well. That great success that they had here didn't really translate when they took them overseas. I mean, Vern Schupen raced them overseas, John McCormick briefly had a run over there, and they didn't. They were never quite as successful as they were on home soil because they were enormously successful here. They were, yeah. Vern, for instance, with the F5000, it sort of ran into rule changes and things like that, which made it less competitive. And so, do you cover the single seat K and M car in here? Oh, we do. Yeah. That's I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad yeah. of that. Yeah. One we, of the most beautiful and ugly cars at yeah. the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Architecturally, also brilliant. Um, over 700 pages. How many chapters was it as well, though? I mean, didn't. Oh, it's 50 odd, uh, covering sort of every every model. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. OK, well, as I said, we will see them down at Phillip Island this weekend. If you want to head down Phillip Island, three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Phillip Island Historic. David, um, a fantastic book, unbelievable. Um, if you, uh, what are you working on at the moment? I'm, I'm actually working on a new book that's just on one of the Elfin 400s. Wow, well, that's, that'll be worth well, when, when yep. you finish When you finish that, please come back T and TBA, show it 12 to months, us again. two years, David? Uh, later this year. Only 12, in the next 12 okay. months. Yes. Lovely. Yep. Okay, well, thank you, David Dowsey. Thanks thank for you. joining us on In Pit Lane. Thanks, lads. And thanks to you at home for joining us next week on the program. As you heard in the news, our guest next week will be um, New Zealand uh, Formula Ford star Jason Michaels. But right now, to take us out is Stephen Heath. He's playing around Melbourne at the Pause Bar at Balaclava on Saturday, the 28th of March. But he's going to take us out right now with his song, Dram Dramatic Night. So until we see you next week, from all of us here on Inpit Lane, this is Stephen Heath and Dramatic Nights. Good night. I don't know what to do in this situation Really need some air You send a vibration Already shaking in anticipation Really need some air Don't say
You're a fascination to me, revelation to me. I don't want to be with anybody else. You're a temptation to me, sensation to me. I don't want to be with anybody else. Don't leave me alone. I cannot take it. Did you steal my heart so you could break it? Don't. 